Hello everyone, welcome to the second part video on circuit theorems. In this video, I'll be walking through numerous kinds of questions you can find in circuit theorems. Some are going to be simple, some are going to be difficult, some are going to be mid-range. Now, it doesn't matter what kind of question you find here. At the end of this session, you will have a better understanding on circuit theorems. So, without wasting any of your time, let's dive in straight into the first question. Now, here we have a diagram A, B, C, and D on the point of a circle or a center O. Okay, center O here, and angle B, A, D is 55 degree, and B, O, D is um, X degree, okay? And then uh, angle B, C, D is Y degree. Now, in the first part question, we ask to find the value of X. Now, this angle X here, okay? To find the angle of X, now we can consider this Angle to conference here definitely has to be twice the angle here. So if here is 55 degree at the second frame, at the center it has to be twice of it, and then it's going to be 55 times 2. So to work at the value of x, I can say x is going to be 55 okay, degree times 2, and this is going to give me 110 degree. So angle x is 110 degree. Now the reason here, well, for, we asked to find the, really, the reason, so give a reason for your answer, well, angle center, okay, angle center of a circle, okay, angle center is equals to twice uh, angle at circumference, okay, that's make it very easy, conference, okay. Now for question B, it says work out the angle Y. Yeah, this angle Y, okay, and to find angle Y, you can consider two ways you could do that. One is to try to find the reflex angle here and then divide by two to get angle Y. Or you may consider that this is a cyclic quadrilateral, 55 and angle Y should add up to 180 degree. Now, any of these two steps you use, you arrive at the same answer. But I'd like to use the opposite angle of a cyclic quadrilateral. Okay, so that means 55 plus y should give me 180. So to get y, what I need to do is to say 180, okay, I'll subtract um, 55 degree. And if I do the subtraction, I'm going to have 125 degree. Okay, that's very easy. So y definitely going to be 125 degree. Okay, now question I, I say is give a reason for your answer. Well, the reason is going to opposite, um, opposite angle, okay, opposite angle of a cyclic, opposite angle of a cyclic quadrilateral, cyclic, I hope I'm going to spell right, good, cyclic quadrilateral, okay, add up to, add up to 180 degree. So that's very simple. Okay, so now we're gonna move to the next question. Yeah, we've got a diagram here, and that shows the center O, and A, B, C are points on the circumference. Now, D, C, O is a straight line. Okay, so this is D, C, O on a straight line. And D, A is a tangent, so D is a tangent to the second, and angle A, D, O is 34, so that's 34 degree. And now we need to work out the angle AOD, and so this is AOD, okay? So this is the angle we're really looking at for, okay? I'm going to shade it to make you see it very clearly, okay? Now, to find that angle, we need to consider some um, theorems. Now, this is a radius, and this is a, uh, a tangent. Now remember, we said for a tangent meeting a radius, it means it always meet at 90 degree. That means this angle here is 90 degree. So if we consider this triangle here, that's angle AOD, 90 degrees plus 34 plus this angle should give you uh, 180 because some of angles the triangle is 180. So what I'm gonna do here right now is to say I'm gonna add 34 and 90. Okay, I'll add 34 and 90. That's gonna give me 124 degrees. I'm going to subtract that from 180 degrees, and that's going to be 124. I'm going to subtract, okay, and that's going to give me um, 8 minus 2 is 6, or it's going to be 5, okay, 56. So that means angle here is 56 degree, okay, so this angle here is 56 degree, okay. Now, of course, here I'm going to 56 degree, okay, put it here, okay. Now, um, 
Question B says, what are the sides of angle ABC? Now, the angle ABC really refers to here. Okay, so this is the angle we are kind of looking at for. Now, to know what angle you to look for, always check the middle letter in the given alphabet. That gives an idea what you're going to be looking at for. Okay, so if here is 56 at the center, at the circumference is going to be half of it, okay? So angle, the angle ABC is going to be 56 uh, divided by 2, and that's going to be, that's going to be 28 degrees, okay? So this angle is definitely going to be 28 degrees, so, okay? And for question I, I says, give a reason for your answer. Well, the reason is so quite simple. Angle center, okay? Angle at center is um, uh, is twice the angle. It twice the angle at the circumference. Okay. Okay. Just make it very quick. All right. So that was very easy. So we now know the angles for A, B, C, and of course the reason. Okay. So let's move on to the next question. Now we have a set. We have a diagram here, and A, B, C are points on the circumference of a circle with center O, and A, C is diameter. Okay, very very instructional. A, C is diameter. So question A is write down the size of angle A, B, C. So I'm looking for the angle on B. So there's definitely this angle here, all right? Now since I know have it told that this is a diameter A, C, and this is um, angle on this angle on the semicircle, definitely this angle has to be 90 degree, okay? So it's a right angle really, so angle ABC, the size of it is gonna be 90 degree. Okay, and question, the question that follows after it says, what's the reason for your answer? Well, it's very obvious, angle of the semicircle is 90 degree. So you can say angle uh, at, the, at the semicircle, okay? Semicircle A is right angle. Okay, that's very easy. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. Now, angle DEF are points on the circumference of a circle with center O. Okay, we have it there. And angle DOF is 120 degrees. Now, we need to work out the size of angle DEF. Remember, your focus is on the letter in middle between DEF and that's angle E. So I'm going to look. This is where I'm looking at for angle D E F here. Okay, good. Now, okay, now, so what I'm going to do here is um, if here is 120 degrees, definitely this angle is going to be half of it because angle center is twice the angle at the circumference. So this angle is going to be 120 degrees uh, divided by 2, and that's going to give you 60 degrees. Okay, and the second part, give a reason for your answer. Well, angle center. Angle center is uh, twice the angle, twice the angle at the circumference. That's the angle at the circumference. Okay, so that's it. Okay, let me just wipe this out to make this a lot neater. Okay, all right. And now we we'll move on to the next question. Now, this looks a little bit co uh, complex, but it's very simple. But let's look at this question first. Let's look at it first of all. Now, BDE are points on a circle with center O. Mm -hmm. Now, center O is going to be uh, going to be somewhere here. Center O, okay. And ABC is a tangent. Okay, this is a tangent. And BE is a diameter. BE is a diameter. And angle DBE is 25 degree. Good. Now the question says find the angle size of angle ABD. ABD is definitely going to be somewhere here because ABD. Okay. Now to find this angle, okay, one thing we can consider uh, first of all is um, you you could think you you could think this as a straight line, okay. And then you have your tangent. Now remember, these two angles, this angle, the tangent and the straight line here should add up to 90 degrees. Okay, so if this whole part here, okay, is 90 degrees, and I know here's 25, and I need to find this angle. All I need to do is to subtract 25 from 90, okay? So I'm going to do something like this here. So I'm going to do 90 
degree minus 25 degree and that's going to give me 65 degree okay so this angle here angle a b d i'm going to share that so you can see it in the one i'm really referring to especially okay that's this one is uh 65 degree and the reason okay the reason is very simple you know radius on um, radius and tangent radius to tangent is on um, 90 degree okay and then question b says find the size of angle d e b d e b all right um d e b is going to be somewhere here this is the angle i'm looking at for okay all right now this angle here is 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 as alternate segment to this angle here okay okay so the angle d e b is definitely going to be 65 degree also 65 degree also here the reason Angle on seg um, alternate segment equal, okay? Alternate alternate segment uh to segment angles are equal, okay? That's very easy. So here's gonna be sixty five. All right, so that's done. So we go to the next question. All right. And this diagram ABC points on the circumference of a circle with center O and PA and PB are tangent to the circle. Okay? And angle ACB is 72 degree. And then we need to work out the size of angle AOB. AOB definitely is gonna be here. Well, that's very easy to find because if here's something to uh, angle center is twice the angle made as the circumference. Okay, so here's gonna be uh, 72 times 2, um, that's 72 times 2, and uh, that's gonna give me 144 degrees. So this angle here is gonna be 144 degrees. The reason is angle center, angle center, uh, is twice angle twice angle at circumference twice angle at circumference okay good now for question b says what are the size of angle apb apb is actually the angle here okay so we will look at for this angle here okay i'm trying to give it a shade okay good one now one thing to find this angle apb mm, uh apb that is angle here we already know that we've been told that this line tangent here and this tangent meet at p that suggests that remember the term we said that uh, when you have two tangents drawn out to meet at a point the the tangents should be equal definitely that means this angle this length here of this the tangent here is equals to the length of this tangent here okay that's very easy okay and then another thing we need to consider we have a radius that comes from here down here and means a tangent that's going to be 90 degree or okay the same another radius with another tangent here uh, that's going to be 90 degree so we got three angles and then another angle here a pb now i know that i have a uh, what you call a quadrilateral here and if I add up these four angles this 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 and this I'm gonna have I'm gonna have a uh, 360 degrees so I'm gonna add these three angles first uh, 90 add 90 uh, that's gonna give me 180 and add up 144 also 144 that's gonna give me 324 degree okay all right then to find this, this, I'm going to subtract this sum from 360. So I'm going to have 360 degree minus 324. Okay. Now, if you do the, the subtraction, the subtraction, and you're going to have mm, 6 here, uh, 4, 
36. So this angle is going to be 36 degree. So that makes it a lot easier, right? Here we need to find the angle marked ABC, okay, for the different second term problems you have here. Now, if you look at the first question here, um, we got angle made at the circumference 88 degrees, and we need to find the angle made at the circumference here, A. Well, this is going to be, if here's 88, because angle center is twice the angle made at the circumference. So if here's 88, angle A is then going to be half of it. So we're going to have 88 degrees divided by 2, and that's going to give you 44 degrees. So angle A is 44 degrees. Then we'll come to question B. Okay, number two. If here is 46 degree at the center, now you need to find an angle here B and the second friends. Okay, I mean at the second friends. Okay, so well, it's still the same thing. You're gonna have to 46 divided by two, and that's gonna give you 23 degree. Okay, so here it's gonna be 23 degree. Okay, and so we come down here, up here, right, 23 degree. And then we'll come to question C. Okay, number three. We need to work at the angles C at the center. If the second first angle here is 46, at the second first at the center, you're going to have twice of it. So it's going to be 46 degree uh, multiplied by 2. That's going to give me 92 degree. Okay. All right. So here's 92 degree. Um, so C, you're going to be 92 degree. That was pretty easy, right? So let's move on to number four. Here we have a second theorem problem. Now we need to find the angle mark D. Well, if you really consider, I want to do something here to help you see what I'm seeing. If I try to move this line here, okay, you can immediately see that 23 is the same angle as D, angle on the same segment, right? But I'm going to restore it back, okay? I'm going to restore it back just to I'll help us see okay so if it's a three they're gonna be 23 okay so d23 the reason is because angle on the same segment are equal okay and the same for number five the same thing if here's 39 e, letter e should be also 39 angle on the same segment so letter e is gonna be 39 degree so I'll come down up here I'll write down 39 degree here but I need to find angle F. Well, to find angle F, uh, no couple of ways you can do that. Okay, F here is going to still be the same angle here, okay, because this is going to be, you know, angle is a segment, okay. So I'm, not going, to, I'm going to consider this triangle here. I'm going, to add, I'm going to add 39 is 85, and the result I'm going to subtract from 180. So let me try it here 39 plus 85 degree. And that's going to be 4 here, carry 111, 12, 124 degrees. The angle F, I'm going to subtract this from 180. Remember I did add here, so 180, subtract 124. Uh, that's going to give me 56 degree. So that means angle F is 56 degree. Mm -hmm. And that's in here. So I'm going to have 66 degree. Pretty very easy, right? And then we come to number six. Uh, we got a drawing here. Having an angle here at the center and an angle here at the second friends. Well, still the same. Angle center is always twice the angle second friends. So if here is 41 at the second friends, at the center it's going to be twice. It's going to be 41 times two, okay? And that's going to give me 82 degree. So angle G is going to be 82 degree, okay, write it down, so I'll come up here, 82 degree, very simple, right? Okay, let's move on, let's see more, all right, we got, as I'm going to send a circle here, and all this line here is a diameter, okay, we set it all, now this obviously, angle in the semicircle is going to be 90 degrees, so angle H definitely has to be 90 degrees, uh, there's no question about that, okay? And the same for question A, the same thing, you can see this line is the diameter passing through the center O. And this uh, makes an angle at the semicircle, okay? So the angle I definitely also going to be 90 degree. So angle here is going to be 90 degree. And then we'll come to question 9. Hmm. Now, if you look at this question, you can see you got two lines passing through the diameter, okay? Through the diameter center O. Now, 
I already know that angle G is going to be equal to 36 degree because, well, that's going to be angle the same segment, okay? So I'm going to 36 degree here, that's angle J, so 36 degree, okay? And to find angle K, I'm going to consider this triangle, okay? And this is diameter passing through center O, okay? So this triangle, um, that means this angle is going to be 90 degree, definitely for sure, okay? It's going to be 90 degree, or half right degree. So if I add up this 90 and 36 and so from 180, I'm going to get angle for K. So I go straight by adding 90 degree and 36. Uh, that's going to give me 126 degree. And this, I'm going to subtract from 180 to get K. So 180 degree, subtract 126. Um, this is going to give me 54 degrees. So angle K is going to be 54 degree. That was pretty easy, right? All right, so let's move on to the next question. Question number 10. We got our oh, second problem here, right? Good. Now we need to find angle L. Now the angle made at the center here is already 100, 100 degrees. As the second friend that we have of it, okay? Because angle at the center is always twice the angle at the second friend. So angle L definitely going to be 100 degree divided by 2, and that's going to be 50 degrees. So L is 50 degree, and so put them put it up here, 50 degree. Next, we have to work out the angle M. Now, if you look at this question very well, you can find this in center O, and with a radius here, another radius here, okay, and in an equal, and if they're equal, it means the base angles should also be equal. So here should also be angle M, okay. Now I know the base angle should add up to, I mean, should, base angle should be equal for an isosceles triangle, okay? So to find angle M, I'm going to subtract, um, I'm going to do, or I can do something, add M and M, and add it to 100 to give 180, right? Or, or for M, or you could just say 180 minus 100 and divide it by 2 to get one of each of angle M, okay? But I'm going to use that method. I'm going to say 180 here. Subtract 100 degree, and that's going to give me uh, 80 degree, okay? Now, this 80 degree, I'm going to divide it into 2 to get each of the angle for M, and that's going to be 40 degree. So here's 40 degree, M is 40 degree, and here's going to be also be 40 degree. Okay, so um, M is 40 degree, so I come here, right down here, 40 degree, okay? All right, we come to question 11, and um, we got some really complex problem here, but we can really do some work in here. We need to find angle N, P, N, Q. And which one can we get first? Yeah, we can get N, okay? Because have angle at, uh, at the center here is twice the angle circumference here, okay? So N definitely going to be uh, 18 times 2, and I'm going to give you 36 degree. So N is going to be 36 degree, okay, point one, an easy one. Next, to get angle P. Now, how do we get angle P? Now, this is angle P here. Well, that's very easy. Because, see, this from here, from center O down here is a radius, and same from center O here to other here is also radius, so that means this length here should be equal to this length here. And uh, that's going to be an answer to the triangle. Okay, and that means this base angle here should also be angle P. Okay, I already know N is 36 degree. All I need to do is to subtract, to find angle P is to subtract this angle 36 from 180 and then have it to find individual angles for P and this other angle here, virtual P. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is to say 180 degree minus 36 degree. Um, it's going to give 4, uh, 5, okay, 4, 104 degrees, okay? Then to find each angle P here and this other, also this virtual angle P, I'm going to divide 144 uh, divided by 2, and that's going to give me 72 degree. So that means angle P is going to be 72 here, degree, and also here, this angle P here is going to be also 72 degree. So I come here, right? Angle P is 72 degree. 
And next, we need to find angle Q. Well, there are a number of ways you can find angle um, angle Q. One way you could do this is, I mean, a very fast way to do that is, I already know that PQ, this out of these two angles here, should always be equal to 108. I mean, these two angles, P and Q and 102, add up to 180, right? Because it's cyclic one lateral, okay? All right, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to say P plus Q, okay? This is on an angle. Add up to 102 degree. That's going to be 180 degree. Why? Because this is the opposite angle of a cyclic quadrilateral. Because we have the quadrilateral here already in a second. Now, I already know angle P to be 72. So I have 72 plus Q plus 102 is equal to 180 degree. Now, if I add up 72 plus 102, I'm going to have... Mm, 174 degree and let's go to 180 and to get angle Q you subtract 100 you do subtract 174 from 180 and that's going to give you 6 degree okay angle is 6 degree so that means angle Q is actually 6 degree Okay, now in this question, we need to find the various angles A, B, C, D, E, and F. But first, angle A. Now, this is a cyclic quadrilateral, okay, in a cycle, okay? And we need to form, find the angle A. Remember, the opposite angle of a cyclic quadrilateral always add up to 180. So, to find angle B, uh, I'm going to find the um, angle A. Let me get angle A first, okay? Angle A is going to be 180 degree or subtract 109. Okay, but this is going to give me uh, a subtract. It's uh, going to be one, okay, seven. So, 71 degrees angle. Angle A is 71 degree, okay? A is 71 degree. To work out angle B, I want to subtract 188 from 188, from 180, okay? And that's going to be... Two nine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Correct. So angle B is gonna be ninety-two degree. So B is ninety-two degree. Alright, for this oh, and on the second quadrilateral, the opposite angles will always add up to one eighty. Okay. So angle C then is gonna be one hundred and eighty. C and I want to show add up one eighty. So to get C one eighty minus one hundred and twenty. And that's going to be 60. So I'm going to see 60 degree. Okay. So C is 60 degree. For D, the same thing. We'll do 180. Subtract 103. 113 rather. 7. Mm, 67. So it's going to be 67 degree. So D is 67 degree. But if you add them up, you're going to see they're going to have 180 degree. So this is going to be 67 degree. And then we come to question three. Now we need to find angle E. Okay. All right. To find angle E, well, you can consider this line here is a straight line. And the uh, standard angle is 98. Now to find this angle here, uh, we're going to do 180 minus 98. Okay. Let me do 180 minus 98. Uh, it's going to be... Two. I'm going to be 82 also. Am I right? Mm, um, good, 82. 82. So they're going to be 82 degree. All right. Mm -hmm. And to find angle E, this angle add up E and they should give you 180. So to find angle E, I'm going to subtract 82 from 180. So let's do 180. Subtract 82. Okay, you have 8 here. And they could have um, 9. So, 98. So, this angle E is going to be 98 degree. So, here's 98 degree. To find angle F, well, we've got opposite angle of the second quadrilateral should add up to 180. 
So I'm going to find on find angle F, I'm going to subtract this value 1 to 5 from 180. So 180 degree, subtract um, 125, that's going to be 55 degree. So angle F is going to be 55 degree. Okay, now just out of interest, if you add up this opposite angle, you'll find the wall is add up to 180. The same for this and the same for this also. Okay, all right, so let's move on to the next question. All right, uh, we need to find angle G, H. Okay, here to find angle G or angle H, but let me say angle, mm, let's say angle H, G first. But I know you have a straight line here, it's 100 degrees. Here can be a hundred eight around eighty separate around eighty. So here it's gonna be eighty degrees. Okay, because angle of straight line is one eighty. Okay. So if here is eighty, this angle both angles should be equals G and eighty should add up to one eighty. So and this G is gonna be hundred degree because you're gonna do one eighty degrees minus eighty. Of course it's gonna be hundred degrees. That's how I got this hundred degrees here. So angle G is hundred degree. For angle H, well, one thing I can tell is that um, this angle here is going to be, to find this angle here, I'm going to subtract it from 180. So 180 minus 85, uh, 5, so here's remaining 7. So 7 minus in the possible, so here 17 minus 8. Um, that's going to give you 9, okay, of course here is 0 anyway, so 95, so it is going to be 95 degree, okay, and to find angle H, remember angle the straight line is 180, so H is going to be 180, um, 180 minus 95, again you have 5, subtract, mm -hmm. and you have 85, okay, so angle H is going to be 85 degree. So angle H here is 85 degree. And then we come up here. Now we need to find angle I here. This angle I. Um, now we've got a triangle here already. We know uh, that it is an, uh, this length here is equal to this length here. That means the angle I here should also be equal to the angle I here. Okay. But let's continue. But again, you have a straight line here, and this angle here, these two angles should add up to 180. So if here's 102, this angle is going to be 78. Okay, 78. And how do I know it's 78? All I need to do is to subtract 102 from 180, and of course, that's going to give you 78, okay? So if here's 78, I can actually get here, okay? Because I have opposite angle of a cyclic quadrant added to 180. Okay, so I'm going to do 108, uh, 180, subtract 78, and I'm going to see have uh, 102 here because these two angles now should add up to 180. Now, to find angle I, okay, I have two base angles here which are equal. All I need to do is to subtract 102 from 180, and the result I get, I divide by 2 to get individual angles for the base angles here of the triangle. Okay? So, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do, I'm going to do something like 180, I'll subtract 102, which will give me 78. Now, this angle 78, I'm going to divide it by 2 to get individual angle here. So, I'm going to do 78 divided by 2. Um, that's going to give me 39 degree. So angle I is going to be 39 degree. Okay, also here is going to be 39 degree. Now if you add up this triangle, you're going to find, if you add up these angles, you're going to find it's going to be 180 degree. So angle I is 39 degree. And then we come to question 6, and we got a, a kind of a drawing here, and we need to find angle J. Hmm. Uh, one of the things you could do is there are a number of ways you could do. You could find this reflex angle here and then divide by 2 to get angle J. Okay. Or you could just think of this angle here to be 44 because angle center is going to be twice the angle circumference. So if here is 88, that thing here has to be 44. Okay. And then I can now consider that this angle here 
and angle J add up to 180 because you have a cyclic equilateral. Okay, so that means I'm going to do um, 180 minus 44, 6, it's going to give me 36 degrees. So angle J is going to be 136 degrees because if you add up J and this angle here, I'm going to give you 180. So angle J is going to be 136 degrees. This is not the only way but you can solve this, okay? Like I said, you could find this angle here by solving 360, and then whatever you get, you also divide by 2, you get the angle J. All right? Okay, so let's move on to next. We got some real difficult questions here. We know that we have a problem trying to figure out how to solve this problem. But I don't know, let's try it. <clears throat> here we got the center, okay? We sent a, a diameter here with center O. All right, and uh, we know this length here is equal to this length here. Um, and I also have a radius here, another radius, meaning that this length here should be equal to this length here. All right, okay. So to find angle M, well, because we already know that this is a diameter and this angle is semicircle, that, mean, that means that this angle actually is going to be 90 degrees. Okay, all right, and to get this angle M, all I need to do is uh, subtract 90 from 180, whatever I get, I half it. Okay, so I'm gonna have 180 here minus 90 because this angle here is definitely gonna be equal to M. Okay, all right, so if I subtract this, it's gonna be 90. Okay, and then if I go to have this, you're gonna have this 90 divided by 2, I'm gonna have 45. So angle M gonna be 45 here, and also here gonna be 45. Okay, if I really want to write it down, okay, it means the same thing. 45 degrees here, 45 degree also here. So angle M is gonna be 45 degree. Okay. Next, we need to put out angle K or L. Now, one thing you can consider here is that. Um, Okay, I'm going to try to see what I'm going to do. Uh, let me try to shade here. Okay, let me see what I'm going to do here. To find either, well, if this angle K, here also has to be angle K, right? Yeah, it makes some sense if we say so. <laughs> because this length here is because it's length, and so the base angle of triangle should be it always be equal. So we need to find angle K or L. All right. Um. One thing you can consider, which is very easy, if here is an angle here is 90 circumference, I need to find an angle at the center. All you need to do is multiply by 2, right? Okay. Um, if here is 90, a circumference is going to be 180. Okay. All right. But I don't think that's going to work. What I can do here is um, I'm just trying to figure out what I'm going to do here. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. These two angle here, okay. These two angle here should equal to this two angle here because I mean they should add up to one eighty. Remember, angle opposite angle of the second quadrilateral are always eighty. One eighty. Okay, so this angle here and add this angle here should give me one eighty. So what I'm going to do is to say I'm going to add up these two angle. I'm going to put it like this. These two angle here, which is forty five. And 34, okay, and add up to this angle here, which is 45 plus K, okay, should give me 180 degree, okay. So if I add this value, this two here, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have 79 degree plus 45 plus K is equals to 180 degree. And if I add this, I'm going to have uh, 4 here, 124 plus K is equals to 180 degree. So you get angle K, angle K is definitely going to be 180 minus uh, 124 and that's going to give me 56 degree. So angle, angle K is 56 degree, 
okay so in case it's going to be 56 degree okay all right so to get angle l uh get these two angle kk and l should add up to 180 so 56 plus 56 subtract it from 180 to get angle l so i'm going to do uh 56 56 degree add 56 degree that's going to give me 112 and I'm going to subtract that from 180 so 180 subtract 112 okay that's going to give you um 68 so angle L is going to be 68 degree that was quite a very very kind of difficult okay all right so let's move on to the next question eight number eight we need to work out n p and q you can see the center o okay the diameter all right what you know here is going to be 40 degrees okay you know why because we got a um, vertical opposite angle all right so so how do we find n p or q all right but definitely but since, since this is uh, a diameter and I have an angle in the same circle. This angle is definitely going to be 90 degree. Okay, so I'm going to shade it. I mean 90 degree. All right. So to find angle P is very easy. Just consider this triangle here. Okay. So I have 90 plus 40 and 90 plus 40 here. That's going to be 130. And subtract from 180. So 180 subtract 130. And then 50 degree, so angle P is 50 degree. So angle P is 50 degree here. All right. So we need to find angle N and P. Another thing you can consider, you got a straight line here. So if this, if here is 40 degree, then we can also find it here, which is going to be okay, going to be 140, right? Because these two angles should add up to 180. All right. So if I consider this triangle here. I have 140 plus 21 plus n should be added up to 118. So what I'm going to do to find n is to add up 140 plus 21. Okay, I'm going to do it here. 140. Okay, that's going to be too far. Okay, let me take that away from there. Uh, let me do the work in here somewhere here. So 140 plus 21. That's 161. Okay, I'm going to subtract it from 180, so 180 minus 161, and that's going to give me 19 degrees. So N is going to be 19 degrees, so N is 19 degree. All right, so two down, remaining one, which is Q. Uh, to find Q, what we may consider here is... Uh, Okay, the angle Q is also in the same segment with P. So if P is 50, Q has to also be 50 degree. Okay, that's quite really easy to spot. All right, so we come to one more question, number nine. We need to find angle RS. Now we know that we have uh, two lines Mat okay, meaning that they are the same, so definitely this angle here is going to be angle R, really. Okay, so what we can do, we know if here is 134, we can also find here because the sum the sum up to 180. Okay, it's opposite angle of a circle quadrilateral is 180, so I'm going to find 180 minus 134 here. There's going to be um, there's going to be 46 so this angle here is going to be 46 degree okay and if i to find angle x well i can also think that this angle here and angle s should add up to 180 angles opposite angle with second polylateral add up to 180 okay so angle s definitely going to be 180 minus 110 okay as 70 so angle x here is actually 70 degree the full angle here is 70 degree okay so s is 70 degree and then i need to find angle r well that's very easy like i said 
this uh, angle here this angle I'm going to shade that's what I'm referring okay angle R plus angle R plus 34 134 give 180 so if I add up uh, what I'm going to add 180 so what I'm going to one easy to get angle R is to so subtract 134 from 180 okay and that's uh, 6 um, 46 and then divide by 2 to get the individual angles for R here and the other so 46 divided by 2 this is going to give me oh uh, this is going to give me 23 degrees so R is going to be 23 degrees wow that was real real tough okay so let's move on to the next question all right so we uh, we need to work out the angle a now this is all tan is segment they are always equal so it's so here is 64 here has to also be 64 degree very easy okay all tan is segments are equal and the same for here if, if here is 51 angle b has to be 51 all tan is segment are equal okay and then to find angle C, you can you can think of these three angles. You add up 180 angle in the triangle. So I'm gonna add up 51 and 63. 51 add 63. Uh, that's gonna give me 114. And to get the angle C, I'm gonna subtract this from 180. Uh, that's gonna give me 66 degrees. So so I'm gonna see is 66 degree. Mm -hmm. All right okay so now we move to the third question so we need to find angle D and E we have a tangent drawn here and um, we've got a cyclic quality lateral here and these two angle D and 88 should add up to 180 opposite angles of a cyclic quality also add up to 180 so the angle, angle D all I need to do is to subtract uh, 88 from 180 degrees I'm gonna have um, 92 okay yeah 92 so angle d is 92 degree okay so d is 92 degree next we have to work out the angle uh, e well it depends on what you're looking at but if you kind of turn this round you you will immediately see that this angle here is alternate segment to e i mean that's it. So E is going to be 28 degree because alternate angle are equal. All right? That's very easy, right? Good. All right, so let's move on to the next question. We got a circle and a triangle inside here and a tangent. And this triangle, the length here is equal to the length here. Okay, I mean, if Base, if it's F here, there will also be angle F because the base angle of an isosceles triangle are always equal. Okay, so if uh, here is 78, angle F definitely has to be 78 because the atomic segment angles are always equal. So F is going to be 78 degree. To find angle G, uh, I need to add up these three angles to add up to give me 180 and the final angle. G. Well, here is 78 anyway. We know that because the base angle are equal. So out of 78 and 78, I'm going to have 156. To get find angle G, I'm going to subtract this from 180 because we have some of angle triangles 180. So 180 subtract 156. Uh, you have um, 24. So angle angle G is going to be 24 degree. Okay, yeah, 24 degrees, somewhere around 24 degree here. So here gonna be 24 degree. We're making good progress, right? Okay, now for number five, we need to find angle H and I. Hmm. All right, but first I know this angle, uh, I know it, this angle I definitely going to be the same angle here. Okay, so if I know this angle, that's gonna be angle I because we have all tiny segments. All right, but one, okay, one way we can do this is um, to think of the sum of angle triangle is 180, so if you have 65 and 50 here, what's going to be angle here in the triangle? So I'm going to add 65 and 50, and that's going to be 115. To find this angle here, I'm going to subtract this from 
180 okay uh, if I subtract this I'm gonna have 65 so this angle is going to be 65 degree and angle I is uh, all tiny segment to angle I and the always angles are always the same so angle I is going to be 65 degree already we already know that angle this angle 50 degrees is all tiny segment to angle H so H is going to be 50 degrees as well okay all right so we move on to question six now we got some angles J K L M that we need to find I don't have this triangle here and clips with the cycle and then you got a tangent here now what do we know about an isosceles triangle that is that they are always the base angles are always the same so if here is 40 because we have this right here okay so here is 40 the base angle K also has to be 40 degree so K is 40 degree okay and uh, and I know that this angle is it L yeah angle L is alternate segment to angle 40 also so here's going to also be 40 okay so that's going to be 40 alternate segment are equal all right now we've got this straight line here okay now this three angle should add up to 180 okay so if here's 40 40 to get here j is going to be 100 okay because you see they should add up to 180 okay Right, let me just show you the working 40 plus 40 that's going to give you 80 degree right and remember these three angles should add up to 180 because angle straight line is 180 so i'm going to subtract this 80 from 180 and that's going to give me 100 degree okay so angle j is 100 degree and this angle is also going to be uh, alternate segment, alternate segment to M. They have, this, they should have the same angle, so it's going to be 100 degree as well. Okay. All right. Now you might have noticed that you could go to angle M another way by looking at thinking that you have a triangle here. Okay. These three angles should add up to 180. So if here is 40, 40, that's 80. To be 180 in the triangle, uh, subtract 80 from 180, you're going to have 100. Okay, so that's another way to you could want to solve that. Okay, all right. Uh, so we move on to question N. Here we got. Uh, you see, notice that we have a, a segment here and a radius. Okay, meaning that this whole angle here must be ninety degrees. But first, let's not go through that route first. Okay, okay. First thing. We got a radius and another radius here. That means the length here should be equal to this length, okay? And the angle here should always be uh, also be equal to the angle here, okay? This angle here, the base angle here should also be equal to the base angle here. So to find each of the base angle, all I need to do is subtract this from 180. That's 180 minus 162. If you subtract that, that's going to give you 18. Okay, so to find each of the base angle here, divide this angle by 2, and that's going to give you 9 degrees. So each here is 9 degrees. Also here is going to be 9 degrees, okay? And I always also know, as, as, like I said at the beginning, that here yeah, this, is, this is radius, I have a diameter, I mean uh, a tangent. Now, a radius means a, a tangent at 90 degrees. So this whole angle here is 90 degrees. So if here is 9, n is going to be 90, take away 9, and that's going to be um, 81 degrees. So I'm going to, n is going to be 81 degree. That's pretty easy, right? And then we'll move on to question number 8. Now we need to find angle P and angle Q. Now uh, we have... This could I uh, have a tangent here drawn here and a tangent drawn here also, meaning that this length here should be equal to this length here. So if you look at this triangle here, here is going to be angle P also because they're going to be the same. So to find angle P, okay, you subtract 76 from 180, okay, that's going to be 104. So to find each angle here on the base of the triangle, divide this value, okay, 
104 divided by 2 that will be 52 degrees so each angle here is 52 degree and here also 52 degree okay okay this is going to be 52 degree also so we know p is 52 degree so write down 52 degree here okay now we need to find angle q now to do that uh one, of the, one, of, one thing we can think of is um since this is center and this is the radius this length should also be equal to this radius here so here has to also be angle q also right by extension all right so but what we know is this to get angle q all right remember uh we could do something like um here's 52 here's 52 okay i'm just thinking how i'm going to work this out okay all right all right okay also i also know that this since this is a radius okay and you have a tangent also this whole angle has to be 90 degrees that's a very smart one okay 90 okay remember a radius means a tangent at 90 degrees all the time so this angle has the whole angle here you can see when my key my pen is moving the whole angle here is going to be 90 meaning that angle p and q add up to 90. so to find angle q you subtract 52 from 90 uh so 90 minus 52 uh that's going to give you 38 degrees so angle q is going to be 38 degree so angle q is 38 degree that was very smart right good and let's come to question number nine go we need to find angle r s and t okay hmm. and we have um, the center and then we got a radius and we have a tangent and we know the radius makes an angle of 90 degrees with the tangent so that means angle s plus t definitely has to be 90 degrees right okay that's that's it for sure and because this is a radius okay for coming from the center and also here this angle 2 is going to have to be angle s also okay so to find angle s all i need to do now is um this three angle should give you 180 angle the triangle so i need to do is to subtract 40 from 180 so 180 minus 40 and that's 140 and to find angle s each of the angle s here we're divided by 2 so 140 divided by 2 that's going to be 70 degrees so angle s is 70 degree here okay 70 degree let me write it very well so angle s is going to be 70 degrees but i don't have to rewrite it okay uh, angle s is 270 degree and remember we said s plus t this angle two angle is going to be 90 so if s is 70 t is going to be 20 because 90 minus 70 is 20 so angle t is going to be 20 degrees so that's 90 minus 70 and that's 20 degree so angle t is uh, 20 degree now to find angle r you can consider this full triangle okay and remember the angle sum of a triangle add up to 180 and you'll have your total 90 plus 40 uh 90 plus 40 uh that's going to be 130 and to find angle r okay i'm going to subtract from 180 so i have 180 minus 130 okay uh, that's going to be 50 degrees so angle r is going to be 50 degree that was really really hectic okay so we come to the last question number 10 wow 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 now we've got a cycle we've got two tangents and a triangle also with two legs equal okay and then we need to find angle v u and w all right let's see what we can do first we know here gonna be 81 why because 
these two legs are equal, so the base angle should be equal, okay? So it's easy for me to find angle U because I have a triangle, this three angle add up to 180, so to get angle U, add 81 plus 81, uh, oh, did I say 1? Sorry, that's going to be um, 162, and to get angle U, subtract this value from 180, and that's going to give me 18, so angle U is going to be 18, 18 degree here. So angle U is going to be 18 degree. Next, we need to work out the angle V and W. Now, already we know that the, we've got a tangent here and another tangent here. This length here should be equal to this length, meaning that this angle V should also be, the, this angle here should also be angle V because they should be equal. Base angle are always equal. Okay. Now, we already know that if this angle V is alternate segment to this angle here, so V here is going to be 81. That's quite very, very slick. Okay, so V is 81 degree here. And if it is 81, this angle here also has to be 81 because remember, these are based angle of this triangle. Okay, so to get W, add up these three angles to be 180. So to get W, I need to add these two angles first. That's 81, add 81. Uh, 81 add 81 that's 162 and to get W I'm going to subtract this value from 180 because remember there's some angles in the triangle is 180 so 180 subtract 162 uh, that's going to give me also 18 degrees so W is 18 degree wow this is a I hope you enjoyed this video and if you like the video like and subscribe to this button have a great day.